Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Developer Advocate at Dremio, and this is going to be a first in a series of hands-on exercises to get you introduced and familiar with working with Apache Iceberg. <clears throat> the purpose of this video is not to necessarily go through every detail about Apache Iceberg, um, but to get you familiar with working in it in tools like Spark and Dremio using catalogs like Nessie. Now, just some resources so you're aware of while we do these exercises is one, there's the Apache Iceberg documentation. So again, you can get to that at iceberg.apache.org. This is generally where you can find all the documentation for using Iceberg with Spark. So right here in the Spark section, because some of the lessons we'll be going over like using Iceberg with Spark. Okay. Um, then there's this repo here, uh, basically this Iceberg intro lessons repo. This is going to be the repo you should clone down that's going to have all the tools you need to do the exercises that we have. Okay, so basically all you would do is you'd first click fork here, and that would make a copy of this repository into your GitHub account. Once you're at your copy, okay, and you'll be able to tell it's your copy because it'll say Iceberg Intro Lessons here with your username right here. You'll then click on here where code is, and then you can use this to clone down the repo. Okay, essentially if you want to clone it down, you would just type in git clone, and then you would paste the URL. Okay, and then that would clone down the repo into your machine okay you could also just download the zip file and just unzip it that is also an option okay so that's going to be where this is and we'll come over that again uh in this right here in the data set section i did add this crossfit games data set that i got from kaggle kaggle is a great place to go get sample data if you just want to practice working uh with apache iceberg or just practice data engineering in general so um just so you're aware that that's from there Okay, also far, this video series is not necessarily going to be going over the what is Apache Iceberg, why Apache Iceberg, all that kind of stuff. I do have a video series for that. Um, so if you go to this article here, which will be in the video description, all these links will be in the video description. Um, you'll find this Apache Iceberg 101 article. And here you can find this overview video series where I talk about all the concepts regarding Apache Iceberg so that we can understand all of its features and, and aspects um, conceptually. And then along with a big directory of other blogs and videos and articles for you to learn all you'd ever want about the Apache Iceberg world. Okay, um, so all the resources nice and collated right here. So I would take advantage of that. Um, again, that link will be in the video description. And of course, the Dremio documentation, because some of the lessons will be showing you how to use Apache Iceberg in Dremio. Okay, and basically, if you want to refer to any of the Dremio features or Dremio syntax, that's all going to be here at docs.dremio.com. Okay, so now you see sort of like setting the stage of the resources. This first video, what I want to do is get you set up with just creating the environment. So again, the first step is creating that copy of this repository. Okay, so I have Visual Studio Code as my IDE. That's what, I, what I'm using. Okay, but you can use any IDE or no IDE at all. The idea is this: you just need to create a copy of that re repository on your local computer. Okay, and then here I have a terminal open or a command line open that's opened in that folder. Okay, what I'm using is Docker Compose. So you do need to in install Docker. Okay, so you can just head over to docker.com. It's pretty easy. Okay. And you're just going to install, just basically download and install it. Okay, should only take a moment, and you're good to go. And then you'll have Docker installed, and you'll be able to work through these exercises. Okay, because this, this depends on you having Docker installed. But essentially, the file sets here, again, what you'll do is you'll see here in data sets, you'll see like all the CSV files which we'll be working with, okay? Notebooks may have some sample notebooks. So some of the sample notebooks from this exercises I'll probably have in there. They're not in there yet because we're going to do those exercises together in these, this video series. Um, you'll notice that all your files will end up getting saved into this folder, okay? Uh, for, certain, for certain bits of exercise. Okay, um, Docker Compose. This is going to be the file that allows us to set up our environment. Okay, so when you take a look at in here, what's going to happen is that we have several different containers that we're going to set up. So basically the idea is we're going to create all these little virtual computers that are running different pieces of software on our computer for those who are not familiar with Docker and, and containers and stuff. Okay, so we're going to have our notebook container. And this is going to be running a, contain a container that has Spark 3.3 installed along with Jupyter Notebook running. So that way we can run PySpark scripts against that. We're going to have another container with Nessie. Nessie is going to act as our iceberg catalog. 
An iceberg catalog is essentially a mechanism that allows us to track our iceberg tables so we can bring them from tool to tool. So this is running Nessie specifically 6.67.67. Um, and again, the great thing about Nessie is that not only does it act as a catalog, because there's many things we could use as an iceberg catalog, but it also has catalog versioning features, which we'll show as well. So that means you'll be able to do branches of your entire catalog, uh, do rollbacks, tagging, all sorts of really cool stuff you can do um, with your catalog that you can't do with other catalog options along with like multi-table transactions. Okay, then there is Minio. Minio is gonna be our storage layer. So basically it's an AWS S3 compliant uh, storage layer. So essentially it works like S3, um, but it's its own thing. So essentially this is going to allow us to have object storage that's running on our computer for doing these exercises. So this way you can do all these exercises at zero cost without having to set up any kind of AWS account or set up a Dremio account or deploy a Spark cluster. You can do this all from your laptop. Okay, and then Dremio, which is a data lakehouse platform, which has lots of features, but primarily we'll be using it for querying iceberg data. Um, and then that'll be deployed there. Again, this is gonna be the, the single node Docker version, which is more for evaluation purposes. So some of the governance features and some of the more advanced features that are available in the enterprise and cloud versions aren't there, but definitely there's more than enough there for you to kind of get acquainted with how Dremio works and really kind of appreciate what Dremio brings to the table. So in order to spin up these containers, we just do the following, okay? You're just gonna do Docker compose up. Now Docker compose up, what it does is that by default, it's gonna look for a file called docker compose.yaml. And if I just do docker compose up, it's gonna start up all the containers. I could do that, but then you're gonna have all the output for all four containers coming out of this one terminal window, which can be kind of hard to read. So what we wanna do is just do one at a time. So what I'm gonna do is to here, we're gonna start up our notebook. So docker compose notebook. Okay, and see that's gonna start starting up the, specifically the notebook container. Okay, and see it's getting it all, all ready to go. And we'll start seeing output in a moment. Okay, and cool. And when you see specifically for the notebook container, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna look for this URL right over here. So I'm gonna copy that URL. Okay, specifically the, you want the 127.0.01, not, not this one. Okay, um, then you're just gonna copy that into a browser window. And that's gonna open up um, basically Jupyter Notebook and see has access to all those things that we, all that data that we have, which we'll be able to use to kind of write um, notebooks. Okay, and those notebooks will actually be saved into that 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 notebooks folder. Um, so, because all these two folders are mapped, well, actually all three of these folders are mapped to that container, so they're accessible to that container. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another um, terminal, and then we'll just open up the Nessie container, Docker, uh, compose up Nessie. Okay, and that's gonna start that one. Okay, then we'll just keep doing the same for all the other ones. Docker compose up Minio. Okay. Okay, so I need to remove that container. Okay, so let's do here, do a uh, Docker uh, container purge. Just should clean up all my, you know, all my off containers. Oh no, nope, I think that's the wrong command. So I'm just gonna clean that up real quick. Okay, so again, that was Docker con Docker container prune was the command if you ever need to clean out all your stopped containers. So in that case, now let's try this again. Docker compose up minio. Okay, it's creating it. Good. And then I'm going to turn on another one. And this one, we will start Dremio. Docker compose up. Docker compose up Dremio. Okay, that's gonna start starting up that container. Okay, now let's take a look. So we have here Nessie is running. So we can see all the Nessie output from this container or from this terminal. I can see all the, um, oh, this is all the notebook output. Here's all the Minio output. Okay, and let's actually go make sure that Minio is running uh, all nice and fine. And again, you can see here that we have the Minio username and password as admin password set up here. 
in these environmental variables in the Docker Compose YAML. So if I go to localhost 9000, okay, and that's going to take me to Minio. Okay, so here's Minio's running. Okay, and we can do admin password. Okay, and it's going to take us to our dashboard. Okay, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a couple buckets for ourselves. Okay, so, and again, a bucket is just going to be a place where we can store stuff. So that's going to be right here. We click on buckets and we're going to click create bucket. Okay, and we're going to create a bucket called warehouse. And that should be good enough. Okay, cool. And let's see here. Also, I think Dremio should probably be up and running now. So localhost 9047 should be where Dremio is running from. And then once that's up and running, okay, it may not be up. Yeah, it is up and running. What you're going to do is you're going to first fill out this. Okay. And there we go. And then that will take you to the dashboard. Oh, that's right. You need some numbers. Okay. And then here you are on the Dremio dashboard. Okay. So we have all our containers set up just so you know. And again, if I ever need to take them down, okay, shut them off, I can just open up another terminal and I can take them all down at the same time by just doing Docker compose down without anything after it. And it'll take down all the containers listed in that um, Docker compose file. So that way I can turn them up and turn them down whenever I want. Um, and that's going to be this first video. In the next video, we'll do our first exercise with setting up Spark. I'll see you there.